What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth where I show you how to save money and make more money all while bettering yourself every single day so you can live life on your own terms. I've got something very important to tell you bro. This is probably going to be the realest video I've ever made because I'm about to go over exactly what my financial mistakes were within my adult life. And the crazy and scary thing about this is they don't really seem like mistakes at all. Like, I actually thought I was doing what I was supposed to do by doing some of these things, and I'm gonna tell you all about how I was wrong. Then I'm gonna tell you what I did about it and how you can avoid these all together. So I'm gonna start off with the biggest mistake, overworking myself over an extended amount of time, specifically at my job. This is something I've been guilty of throughout my entire life, and it's something I still struggle with to this day. Like, I'm, I'm just being honest, man. My work ethic is pretty insane. I just, I really don't like to stop what I'm doing. It's rare that I'll take breaks or stop and get something to eat. I like to just get stuff done. Like when I'm in my zone, I'm in my zone. And there's nothing else, it's just me and getting stuff done and that's it, that's just how I am. And usually from an outside looking in perspective, people respect that. It's even commendable for some people, but I'm telling you from my experience, it was absolutely devastating for me. It was like nothing else existed except for me and my work and that was it. When you do that, you lose connection with life itself, what you enjoy doing. You lose your sense of time, purpose, and you even lose friendships. Trust me, this is a rabbit hole you don't want to go down. And you're probably wondering how this is a financial mistake. I'm just going to be blunt, bro. Some employers see that and they take advantage of it. Next thing you know, you're working 70, 80 hour weeks at work, getting lost and absorbed into your work. And then slowly this becomes your life. This becomes your normal. Then you end up spending more time at work than you do with your family and your friends. I always thought that people go to work to make a living to support and provide for their lifestyles and their families. But since I stepped into the working world, I learned that for a lot of us, it's actually the other way around. I just remember seeing a bunch of people old enough to be my dad, keeping young bucks like me in there as long as they possibly could. Remember in my last video or one of my last videos, I told y'all that I had to work 80 hour weeks so my bosses wouldn't have to. I meant that. So there I was, working, even though I wasn't eating enough. Working, even though I wasn't sleeping enough. I was working, even though it was the last thing on earth I wanted to be doing. Even though I just felt like life was passing me by, man. I was missing out on weddings, funerals, family functions. I wasn't able to work on my passion projects like I am now. You can't put a price on that stuff. I was missing out on going to places with my friends. And you know what I said to myself? That must be what being adults all about. That's literally what I said to myself, bro. And I believed it when I said it too. But I'm here to tell you, no, it's not, bro. There's so much more to life than that. Because you know the funny thing about overworking yourself? It's in vain. I've known three guys who have collapsed of a heart attack at work and one of them isn't even living anymore. I've known a lady who was overworked too and the bosses were on her all the time. And this was a sweet older lady who worked as a manager at my last job, worked side by side with me. She worked an average of 70 hours a week and as a matter of fact, I actually trained her right before I switched departments at my old job. Well, one day she went out for surgery, never came back. She passed away at the hospital because something went horribly wrong during the surgery. What do these four people have in common? They all worked hard to make an honest living. They all cared about the workplace. They were all burnt out and they were all taken advantage of. So when you ask yourself, how is this a financial mistake? I want you to think about the health issues and the time spent from what's most important to you because you can't put a price on either one of those. So imagine this, bro. You're working hard every single day, six to seven days a week, and you're being told, well, that's still not good enough. And I'm talking, you're being yelled at, like, nope, you're still not making enough product, make it better. Just imagine you're still accountable and responsible for any and everything that goes on in or out of your control. And if it doesn't improve, oh well, it's on you. And that's the thing, the harshest lesson I had to learn about life early on is nobody cares. If you happen to be working 40 hour weeks and you get fatigued like us human beings normally do when working extended amounts of time, no one cares about that. If you're working 80 hour weeks, but you're only getting paid for 40, nobody cares. As a matter of fact, if you collapse of a heart attack like two of my peers did, or if you fall face down from your fork truck like one of my operators did, or if you're like the lady who I was telling you about who left for surgery and never came back, 
You know what they did for all of them? They replaced them immediately. Two of them aren't living anymore. They replaced him and they replaced her. So what makes me so special? What makes you so special? You know what I'm saying? That's a question that I used to ask myself all the time. There's nothing that exempts us from this. Look, for those who had the heart attacks at work, I just want to point this out. They were stress related. And you know, they happened more than once for both of them. One of the guys had them twice. The other guy had them three times. And these were all at work. And I'm only talking about the ones who actually survived the heart attacks. So think about those who didn't survive. Think about those who their families will never get to see them again, hear their voices again. They'll never be able to laugh with them or hang out with them again. But you know, they were just so into their work. And what did their work do when they couldn't make it back? Replaced them. I don't want y'all to cry or nothing, but I'm just saying this is literally how it goes. And you know, when I was witnessing slash going through this myself at the age of 21 going on 22, it made me set a standard for myself that I will not be the one to go through this ever again. Because I think about the amount of time I spent making literal pennies for my time compared to what my life could look like if I spent my time and energy on something outside of work that was productive. Because the truth is, I could have made a lot more money doing something I enjoy doing. And I know because I'm doing it right now. I also think about all the times I came back to a messy apartment and not having the energy to clean it or do anything about it. When I say messy, I'm not talking about just like a few things on the floor here and there. No, I mean like the whole apartment turned upside down. A tornado went through it. Your boy ain't doing nothing about it because I'm too tired. That's what I'm talking about. I think about when I would come home after a long day of work and I would just collapse on the couch. Not even eat nothing. Not even make it up to my bedroom. I was losing weight, my face was sunk in, all of that. You could see my cheekbones. But not only that, I think about the experiences I missed out on and the happiness I could have had in my life compared to how miserable I was at work. And here's my last point before I move on to the next financial mistake. All this hard work I was doing went unappreciated. At my last job, it definitely wasn't appreciated. Or at least no one ever said, Reggie, we appreciate what you do. You would think after giving two years of pretty much every single day of your life at that workplace that someone would say, hey man, I appreciate you actually putting in all this time, but nah, none of that happened. And to be honest with you, it would have been nice to hear from time to time because at that time in my life, I truly believed that nothing I did was ever good enough. Absolutely nothing. And it was because I started to tie my self-worth, like all of my self-worth was tied to how I was doing at my job, which is never a good idea. And then you know what I did? I started forgetting birthdays, anniversaries, all of that stuff. And that is very hard to explain. You can't just say, oh yeah, sorry, I was busy at work. No family member wants to hear that excuse, bro. Not your family, not your girlfriend, not your wife, not your brother, not your kids. Look, I've seen relationships and marriages end over this stuff. I've seen people's health decline over this stuff, including mine. And it was because I made the choice to overwork myself. I didn't understand my rights as a worker. I didn't understand the value of saying no. So I had to pay the price mentally and physically. And it started to mess with my confidence and my spirit. And this, remember, this is when I was 21. And real quick, I'm gonna show you how quick this can get from bad to horrible. Now let's paint the picture. Let's use our imagination for a little bit that at 21, let's say I was married, had a baby on the way. Me and my wife just got two new cars and a brand new house. That's debt. Now, just for reference, at 21, I was making about $70,000 a year. And at 22, I was making 80K plus. And that's not because I got like a promotion or nothing. It was purely because I was just working stupid hours and they paid me a little. So as we know, babies ain't cheap. Neither are mortgages or car payments. So now let's say the baby comes and my wife is on maternity leave, which means she's not working. I am, which means I now have to work extra just to keep everything stable. Now I'm about to say something very real right now because this actually happens every single day. So I want you to imagine this. Imagine that time goes by and even though everyone understands why you're working so much, your family starts to resent you. Your wife's upset because there's no one helping out at the house. You never see them. When you see your wife, you're short with her. You just want to go to bed. I've seen this a lot. I've seen this in my own relationships. I've seen this in my friends, my coworkers, my family even. I've seen this at a very big scale. 
And if this sounds familiar to you, this is the epitome of what happens when you overwork yourself. It builds resentment and it can build resentment both ways because they could be resenting you because they never see you because you're working all the time. And you could be resenting them because they feel it feels like they're ungrateful that they never see you, but you're the one putting the bread on the table. But the crazy thing about that is it can become so counterintuitive because at some point, the amount of money that you're making extra by doing all the extra work is going to cap out at some point. Which means all this time you're spending putting in all this extra work isn't even worth the amount of money you're getting out of it. That money isn't worth your sanity, your relationships, or your mental and physical health. Because at the end of the day, nobody is going to feel sorry for you for working that much. Because you chose to do it. Even if you feel like it's what you have to do, no one's going to care. Because that reason isn't good enough. No reason will ever excuse you from seeing the people that matter most to you. And there's no reason you could ever give for not being in control of your life that will ever be good enough. I want you to always remember that. So now we're going to move on to the next mistake that's almost as devastating as the first one. Not investing sooner. This is actually something I kick myself about all the time because I didn't take it seriously. I used to put a few hundred dollars in the acorns and then I would make a quick profit, pull the money out three months later, and that would just be that. I would just put it right back into my savings account. That was how I invested. And I was so terrified of the stock market back then that I literally only invested 4% of my earnings into my 401k when I first ever got a 401k. Because the first question that was always in my mind was, what if the stock market crashes? And the reason I kicked myself over that is because I just left it at that. That question was so scary to me that I just didn't even revisit it. Like, I just kind of said, yeah, what if the stock market crashes? I'm not investing anything. <laughs> you know, that's what I did. I did absolutely zero research on the stock market, how it works, what stocks give safe returns, what stocks give big returns. I didn't look at what sectors to invest in. None of that. Instead, I, I just didn't do anything. And sometimes not doing anything is a bad financial decision. Had I done some more research on, say, Apple stocks, for example, and if I would have taken the time to learn how the stock market worked, and if I would have gained an understanding for how much opportunity there actually was within a stock market crash, my investment portfolios would look a lot different right now. I think about that compared to my stock portfolio on Webull right now. I think, like, yeah, that looks great right now, but, man, how much greater would it look I could only imagine if I would have applied myself earlier. I just think, man, if I did the research that I do right now, back then, and I invested hundreds of dollars a month within my stock portfolio, phew, mm, like if I took it seriously, I could have started building an empire much sooner. And I want to be clear about something. It's not about me beating myself up about it. It's about me identifying a problem that I once had and telling you about how I fixed it. That's the thing. Whenever you have a problem, you have to fix it. You might feel like it's too late for you to fix whatever financial mistake you made. But it's not. You can still fix your credit score. You can still make more money. You can still pay off your debt. And you can still invest. Because here's the thing. I truly believe that if you're going to work hard and make some extra money doing it, that money should go somewhere smart, somewhere productive, somewhere where you know for a fact it will grow. That way you can actually build the future that you and your family deserve. And I want to let you know something. Making extra money right now just for right now through investing is the wrong mindset. And it's the wrong mindset to have because inflation will always exist. Prices are going to continue to go up while your wages continue to stagnate. So why not invest in something that makes you money? This is why I make videos for you guys. Because yes, even though I've made financial mistakes, I figured out ways to get started on my best foot with stuff like investing. I've learned about the tax benefits of Roth IRAs and I've learned how to strategically invest in individual stocks. I've learned about safer investments like ETFs and index funds. If you don't know what any of that stuff is, that's okay. But take the time to actually research these yourself and watch this channel because I go over this a lot and you're going to definitely learn about these things. It's important that you build an understanding, even if you feel like it's too late, even if you're in your 30s or if you're 18 years old, it doesn't matter. Get the understanding as early on as you possibly can. And despite what anyone tells you, not investing is definitely a financial mistake. And it's a financial mistake because of all the money that you could be missing out on by not doing it. And let me tell you how I know. Back in 2018, 
and Apple stock was a whopping $55. It is now like $150, at least at the time of this recording, it's $150. So within just a few years, it has tripled its value. And I have quite a few shares of Apple, and I can tell you, even though I made a really nice return on my Apple investments, just imagine if I would have started back then in 2018. Then just imagine the interest of my entire investment portfolio just compounding over and over again throughout the years. See, that's what I'm talking about. Investing is something that takes time, so it's definitely not something you want to wait before doing because the amount of money that you could be making and the amount of money you could be missing out on by not investing is mind-numbing. This isn't about getting rich quick. This is about building wealth, financial freedom for yourself, and even your generational wealth. This is going to be your way to secure your retirement and have way more than you ever need. Because in addition to having your 401k, in addition to having your Roth IRA, you have individual investments as well. You get what I'm saying? That way you'll have way more than you ever need for your retirement. Then you won't be like most Americans are going to be working well into their 70s when they should have been done retired in their 60s. You can even mess around and retire early with this stuff if you play your cards right. But if you get nothing else for this video, I want you to know how important it is to do your own research on investing and taking 100% accountability and ownership for everything you do. I'm just a guy who's had some success with this stuff talking to you through your computer. So all I can really say is learn about compound interest. Learn about making safe investments and then work your way up. Because life is way too short to be making financial mistakes, especially these, because these are time sensitive. So please learn from my mistakes and avoid them like your future depends on it, because it kind of does. Anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. I will see you in the next video. Stay cold.